Good morning. Uh oh, racking, clacking already. Let's do this. All right. I know you're excited about this episode. It is episode 53 of the Coffee Squad podcast. This morning, we are going to be talking about home security and personal protection. Yes, so, we're going to we be talking are. about guns, knives, all that good stuff. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. I know you're a, a weapons guy from the, the Green Berets, and uh, I have a SWAT team. So, we do have a little bit of experience and knowledge on this subject. Um, yes, I we like do. to think of myself as a not an expert, but a jack of all trades on a lot of things. So, uh, you are a jackass. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, oh, yeah, I missed this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. Hey, welcome back from vacation, Will. <laughs> you know, it seems like it's been forever since uh, you and I chatted. But, it has uh, been a while. I'm not sure it was much of a vacation when you're working most of it, but hey, I had a good time. It was good seeing the family units uh, going back west in the motherland, yeah. in, the, in the land of the big sky, clean air. How's Montana? It's good. Uh, you know, yeah. it wasn't too cold. It was, I think it only snowed once while I was there. So not bad. Think about going nice. back this fall for a hunting trip. So cool. If I can work everything out. That'll be fun. I think it's, uh, you know, when we plan the show, shoot, when was it back? Like November, October timeframe as we're mm -hmm. planning everything out. I don't think you had put in your vacation to mm -hmm. go out there, you know, and you went out, you know, to help with your dad's gun show that he puts on every year out there. So, and then just kind of coincides with what we're talking about. So I don't know. Well, I, I think you got some magic weird voodoo going yeah. on, man. <laughs> it's actually the last gun show of his. He, uh, he, you know, he sold the rights to it. This is his last one after 20 years. So it was a little bit bittersweet for him. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it might be a, a good time. You know, I mean, Congress is trying to push down some gun laws and the weapons that you're going to see here, they are not mine. Let me just throw that out there right now. They're not <laughs> mine. I borrowed them. <laughs> from a friend so um i don't own any i don't have any um they are not mine so uh, yeah so let's 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 you know since we are or you are the coffee squad uh, i'm just here to support you now what are you drinking did you uh, you, you got in late last night so i did get in late last you, night are you, are you gonna wow us uh with some with some coffee not Oh, did you learn anything out in Montana? Do they have like some special blend out there that you can't get out here in North Carolina? I'm, I'm sure they do. And actually, this this coffee I got from a, a, a vendor at the gun show. He's uh, from North Dakota because North Dakota is like right next to where my parents live. You know, it's literally two hours away. So, you know, out there, everybody comes from about an eight mile or eight hour radius. Everybody comes over there for this gun show. It's a pretty big deal. Um, but anyways, this guy makes these coffee. He buys these coffee beans green and he roasts them in his house and his oven and sheet pans and stuff like that. And it's pretty good. So it's called old timer from uh -huh. drop time, drop time coffee. You know what a drop time is? All right. So no. if you're looking at an antler, you're looking at antlers. Oh yeah. 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 Most, yeah, yeah. I thought you're talking like some coffee, weird crap. No, you know, well, he, you know out there, beer. everything's hunting out there. Right. So yeah. drop time, he named it after drop time. So drop time coffee uh, out of North Dakota. He's just a little small dude. He making it in his Hold basement. On. Or Put whatever. your hands up again like that for our listeners, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah. Again, man, just one more time. Yeah. yeah, one yeah more time. No, that's good. I want, I want two dragons. I want two dragons this time. <laughs> Anyways, it is a dark roast full bodied. Uh, he, he said he gets an, it, Peruvian coffee beans. These are Peruvian. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's got, yeah, it's got good Peruvians. No comment. <laughs> <sighs> and then, of course, I've got my liquid IV. It says every time I travel, I feel like I get dehydrated. So uh, I got my liquid IV going this morning, strawberry flavored. Nice. So what um, are you drinking? I know you got some. Are you back uh, on the look, kettle or did you fall off that wagon completely? Uh, look, you left, man, my whole life. Went to shambles, man. I got on keto is. for a little bit, man. Put on about four pounds on, maybe five. Who knows? Could be up to six by now. Um, <laughs> so they got back on it. So um, out where I live, Harris Teeter, pretty big shopping uh, grocery store. And they have a gas station. And, I mean, just look at that can. I mean, it's kind of hard with the green screen. But yeah. it's called a Lonnie Tropical, man. They have, like, Watermelon Wave. They have a few other awesome flavor profiles. And um uh, really um i'm partnered in a supplement company yeah exactly so i'm looking at flavor profiles as we're uh coming up with this new drink and so i saw like these flavors i was like oh great you know um only five grams of sugar and it's really that uh sugar alcohol that they sweeten this with so mm -hmm. works with the keto diet um brother it's like 
sucking on some Jolly Ranchers. Uh, mm. Yeah, see, I don't like guys. super sweet, so that's because you're sour. You're just a sour person. So yeah, um, I've been anyways, this one's called Tropical. I, I've been called worse by better. It's all good. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, the only opinion <laughs> that matters is mine. So, um, so yeah, man. So good to have you back. Glad, glad the trip went good. Let's jump into the topic, man. No one wants to hear about your vacation, mm -mm. my keto diet, and these weird little yeah, drinks. Jolly Rancher drinking. flavor, yeah. Yeah, my buddy Neil, he, he talked to me yesterday. He's like, thanks a lot, but I've been listening to your podcast, and now he's drinking like sparkle flavored water. So, Neil, um, I'm just looking out for you, man. Much love. Nice. So, um, all right. So, let's, let's jump into this topic of home security, personal protection. We're kind of wrapping up the series here. Um, this is like the last like real little – piece of information that we're going to go with a home security 101 series in the next week we're going to kind of wrap it up and just have a discussion over everything so well like why so you know as as a SWAT as a police officer why why do you think it's good to and we're not just going to talk about guns you know just for our listeners yeah, out there. we're going to talk about all types of personal protection yeah we may concentrate a little bit on guns because you know they're fun <laughs> they're great tools, but, and they are a tool. Uh, but so, you know, I, I think it's important to be able to defend yourself and your castle, right? I mean, that's kind of our, our, that's what we're here for. You know, you should have that right to defend yourself and your property and all that good stuff. And it kind of, so last month there was a, a, a kid up in, in North Carolina that um, he's staying at his grandmother's house and two masked intruders broke into the house, demanded money and shot the grandmother in the leg. Well, the 12-year-old boy got the gun, and he shot at and hit one of the uh, intruders. They got away, but they later found one of them, um, DRT, down the road. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. Um, he yeah, had, he had passed DRT? away. Dead oh. right there. He oh, had, okay. he'd, he'd, he'd passed away. He succumbed to his injuries uh, from a gunshot wound, and uh, they linked him back to the home intruder. Obviously, you know, um, we're not going to say names or locations because everything's, you know, proven innocent until proven guilty. For most professions, not all professions, but anyways, I'll digress. Uh, but anyways, so the the whole thing about being able to protect yourself and your family and, and your property and stuff like that, I, I think it's an important part of security. Yeah, I think that's a great story, right? Um, you know, I don't want to go in the second, third order's effects of what, you know, the 12 year old, what he's going to face probably the rest of his life. Um, yeah. You know, some of the mental agony of taking someone's life. Um, again, he was protecting his grandmother. Uh, if I saw the kid, man, and give him a big high five and be like, man, you're a hero, right? Um, great job. Um, so, and, and we'll talk about some of the, the pros and cons of protecting yourself, you know, what, what goes on with it, you know, not just the physical thing, but there's a mental aspect of, of that as well. But then there's also the other side of the story, right? Um, in Texas, a few months ago, uh, there's a felon out, um, who broke into who was on the run he was wanted in texas uh running from the from the law enforcement and he uh was hiding in a church bathroom and the pasture kind of heard something had his gun out opened the door and the and the suspect then grabbed the gun from the pasture shot and killed him so um i think there's you know uh there's two ends of the spectrum of gun ownership we we have a great story of a 12 year old um who used it um and then a tragedy of a of a gun owner who, and I don't know all the stories and I'm not going to uh, definitely not talk ill uh, of a pastor who's trying to protect himself. But the, my point is if you're going to use any type of weapon, any, anything, know how to use it and, and know how to use it properly. Um, so it doesn't turn against well, you. I am not, a huge yeah. uh, second Amendment amendments, right? Like um, advocate. Um, I, I, uh, again, there's always a line with everything and there's always boundaries that we should look at, but, uh, I, that's what I think, you know, I, I love our constitution. Um, I've defended our constitution. I swore an oath just like you did, Will. So um, yeah, multiple times. Yep. I guess if, if you don't, um, if you're a listener out there, um, we're not going to talk about the second amendment here. Uh, we're not going to debate the second amendment. We're going to talk, look, it's our right, uh, right now to carry these guns. And we're going to talk about how to use them properly. Not just the guns again, like Will said, but we're going to talk about tasers blunt force objects, knives, pepper spray, um, and, and, you know, hand to hand type stuff. So, um, 
Well, I, I think well, you got, kind of brought up a good point. I, I, now, obviously, you need to know how to train. Now, this is with any weapon, not just a gun. Not only do you have to be proficient at your your whatever it is you're using, but you have to have the right mindset. And I think that is kind of an overlooked part of home defense, that yeah. if you're not in the right mindset, then you really, your best option is to escape, which goes back yeah. to our number one point is always have a plan. Yeah. So... Again, we don't want like for you guys out there listening or gals out there listening to to be paranoid all the time. It's just be aware of your surroundings. Oh, and like Will said, always have a plan. Um, you know, Tim. Uh, I was talking to him this morning. He's getting ready to go on a little trip for his birthday, and uh, he was listening to our podcast about situational awareness. And actually, had a, a situation where. Um, and those who don't, I mean, I've known Tim since I was like five years old, but he, uh, he's a big boy, uh, six, four, maybe six, five. I don't know. Um, just big dude. Um, intimidating, you know, to, to the, I'm a little midget. Um, but his situational awareness where he works, uh, it isn't always the best area. And he, you know, some gentlemen kind of approached him and he, uh, yeah, he kind of just had that situational awareness of he saw them, saw them looking at him, and then kind of walked with a purpose towards him. Um, and um, things kind of just they both they all went their way. So again, situational awareness, have a plan, and then know if you're going to use a tool, know how to use that tool, train on it, know the laws of it, um, and be proficient with it. I, I can yeah. honestly say, like I used to shoot a lot. Uh, I'm a much better teacher than I am a shooter. But I, um, I haven't shot, yeah, I haven't shot a pistol in a long time. I shot a 308 uh, out hunting um, out in the, the early December, but I haven't, I haven't shot in a long time. Um, and so my skill sets aren't nearly uh, what they used to be. However, yeah. I would say even as rusty as I'm in, I probably shoot better than most people. Yeah, we, so I went shoot since I was, you know, back, back in big sky country i went shooting and i was i was pretty proficient as far as a static target but a moving target you know it's been a long time since i've done any of the uh moving yeah. target type exercises i think that would definitely give me a little bit more of a challenge and unfortunately most ranges don't have that option you know we're lucky because we're around military installations so they do have some of those high speed gucci ranges not everybody has that option yeah but it's better to be proficient at a static target than not be proficient at all Absolutely. Um, you know, and even the military, let me tell you, like I, I've evaluated a lot of the military units out there, uh, infantry units, and most train on static targets. And yep. I can tell you in all the gunfights that I've been in, I don't think very few have they ever just stood there like an E-type silhouette and said, okay, here I am. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. I I, 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 you know, I was in before you and I mean, we were still doing trench warfare old. training and stuff. I'm the same age as you, but whatever. I just, I just decided to join in a little before you, but anyways, we were doing trench warfare bunker, you know, stuff like that. And they transform slowly to CQB type stuff. And I think that you guys get a lot more training on it now than what I used to, but the E silhouette, I think the static just standing there. I, I think that kind of dates back to the whole trench warfare where you were just standing there and shooting at each other. And I don't think they've really adapted their training methods to kind of keep up with the changing and evolving world that is war. It's getting better. Um, I can tell you on the evaluation team that I was working with a few years ago, um, once I got out, um, we were using E-type silhouette or not E-type uh, robotics um, that could move. You know, you, you had, um, we geofenced them in an area and they could move left, right, forwards and backwards. Um, and we had sensors on them that would tell you if it's a kill shot or a wound shot. Um, they are super expensive. I know the Marine Corps out in Lejeune has, has bought a ton. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of the spec op units have them. Um, so it's only a matter of time. And I, I, you know, look, the military is always antiquated, right, when it comes to training and tactics. Um, so, uh, but let, let's right. talk about homes let's talk about our people out there let's let, let's so okay, always have a plan right if you if yeah. you have a weapon in your home you know we're going to talk about the different guns let's let's jump into that you know so right, we got so. handguns right so yeah. uh, this is a glock 26 uh, i keep it uh in a safe uh in my room i have three kids so um yep. definitely if you're going to own a firearm 
you know, I tell everyone, I don't care if you have kids or you don't have kids, put them in a safe, uh, make sure they're, they're locked up and secure. And that's not just for children's safety and your safety. It's for everyone's safety. Uh, look, if someone comes in and robs your home and it's you that, have it's your, that layer of protection, another layer, of this protection. fits in the back, back part portion of my pocket. I can put it in my front pocket. I can put it. I wear a lot of sweatshirts in the fall, winter time, early spring. I can put it uh, inside the pocket of, of a hoodie sweatshirt. So, um, you know, that's easy for someone to pick up and walk away with. Now, you know, again, this is, um, this is AR 15, right? Um, so this is a little bit harder to pick up and walk away with. Um, but, Not really. um, you can still conceal it, right? Uh, you, there's, there's ways not to break them down. So, um, you know, as, as we're talking about weapons and stuff, you know, so ad hack, uh, a handgun, there's a rifle, AR is a rifle, uh, shotgun, right? This thing is, this is a duck hunting shotgun, pretty big. Um, Go ahead and wrap now, that so people can hear it. Yeah, so. That's a very distinct uh, sound. Yeah. If you know how. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Let me make sure it's clear. <laughs> so. Yeah. You can, you can hear that. That's a distinct, yeah. definitely a distinct it's, sound. So it's like a rattlesnake. If you you never heard if you never heard a rattlesnake, you still know what it is when it, you, if you get near one. So yeah. So let's talk about the pros, right? Pros of a of a handgun, of a pistol. Um, it doesn't matter if it's semi-automatic or a revolver, any handgun. Um, the pros aren't small. Um, most are pretty easy, depending on the trigger pull um, and caliber. Uh, and the caliber, but the, you know, the trigger pull, I know some people look older, people have a harder time yep. holding a weapon or and squeezing that trigger. So, um, you know, Beretta is back in the day when we used to use a Beretta nine mil is a double action. Um, and so it was a little bit harder It's eight pounds yep. to pull it the first time. Then after that, once it went to single, you're looking at four pounds or less. So, um, same with most revolvers. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not going to tell sit so here if you any any pistol or any revolver any handgun that you want um if you're looking at buying a gun first ask yourself should you own the gun no. um do you have the mental capacity um to own it um and, and to be a, to be a safe firearms owner not just safe but a responsible one as well so one thing I like to tell people with when they ask me is before you you decide that you want to buy a gun, you have to you have to have in your mind that are you willing to take somebody's life to protect your own? And I, I think that's with any weapon, right? Anything that you're going to do, protect yourself, because not everybody has that that mindset and that make. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. It that that's just who you are, and that's that's fine. But if you if and I know uh, I was talking to a female, and she's like, I just don't know if I could do it. I was like, Well, what about it? Can you take somebody's life if it's protecting your child? And that kind of gave her a different mindset. She's like, yeah. well, yeah, I'll do that to protect my, she's like, she was more, she was willing to not do it. She's willing to die. Right. But she didn't want to risk her kid's life. So she was willing to do it. And once I kind of framed it in that mind frame, she was more accepting of, okay, if I'm going to own a gun, I have to have the mindset that if I have it, I'm going to use it because you don't want to enter a gun into a situation if you're not going to use it. Cause it'll just get turned around on you. Like you were talking about down there in Texas. Absolutely. You know, like, uh, I've gone shooting with family members of mine. Uh, we didn't grow up with guns in the house. Um, and my mom was totally against guns. She still can't stand them. Um, and I went to a range with my family members. And I can tell you two of them, once they pulled the trigger the first time on that pistol, it scared the crap out of them and they dropped it um, right there. I lost my mind because um, it's a safety thing. But again, you know, um, it, it's, it's a mindset of, can, are you, are you willing to protect yourself and those around you? Um, yeah. and if you're shaky on it, just like anything, you know, uh, I, I hope most people wouldn't go into a marriage and I'm like, uh, I don't know about this guy. Well, same thing with owning a weapon, you know, uh, if you're, I, I don't know. You, you probably should take a pause and, and reassess. Um, and then let's say you do buy it. I definitely recommend if you've never shot a gun, um, do your research, get training. There's a lot of whack jobs out there offering like this cool guy. Uh, I call it the Navy SEAL stuff. And again, like to my 
SEAL buddies out there. I'm not picking on you, but I caught the cool guy Navy SEAL like training that's out there. And it's absolutely atrocious. It's more dangerous uh, going to those clowns uh, than not. Um, and so do your research, reach out, Hey, reach out to me, reach out to Will. Uh, we can point you guys in the right direction of some people that are, are trained and they're not going to teach you this Hollywood bull crap. Um, that's out there. That's going to get yourself killed or someone else killed. Yeah. Um, and, and then train, 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 train. My wife, uh, she's like, like that woman that you were describing, Will, super sweet, super kind, but man, you mess with mama bear, watch out. Uh, she yeah. has her concealed carry. Uh, we've shot, we've trained. Um, sometimes I think she's a better shot than I am with a pistol. Um, Most women tend to be better sh shots than men. They so. are. Yeah. So, uh, but again, train, train, train. So we've talked about pistols. Um, and I guess one of the pros of, of a pistol is that it's small and it's compact. It, it's yep. easy to carry. It's it's not super heavy. Um, it's it's just, it's easy. Uh, one, one thing I always like to point out too is when people are holding a pistol, um, especially younger people and amateurs, they love to talk. A lot of people like to talk with their hands. And sometimes they'll point that pistol at you mm -hmm. or at themselves without knowing it. So a um, little gun safety tip, man. Always keep the keep that barrel point in a safe direction yeah that's um, a, if, always treat a gun like it's loaded no you know and yep. don't ever point it at something you don't you're, you're not prepared to kill essentially right or or right. wound yeah so and, that's and a positive keep your, and keep your booger snatcher off the trigger until you're ready to go yeah so that's 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 a pistol right that's a handgun um, so one one con i would say about the handgun is they're a little um without practice they're a little less accurate especially at distance yeah you're you're you know you're not getting more than 50 yards um Accuracy, and that's someone who's trained <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, most people can't even hit at 25. Um, and if I took most people to the range um, and I put about a three inch dot up, you know, most people aren't even gonna what we call keyholing is, you know, just mm -hmm. stacking those shots at, you know, three to five meters are way off, you know. So there's fundamentals of shooting to learn. So, and people kind of look like, why? Well, look, this is a short barrel. You know, this little barrel here is super short. Um, yeah. So, and some come a little bit longer, uh, oh, yeah. but you're, you're still, you're, you're talking. I've got my little one. It's a LCP Ruger LCP 380. And this thing, it, it's good for concealment, but it's not very accurate. I mean, once, yeah. once you get about past five, six, seven yards, it's, it's not as accurate as something like your Glock. Yeah. And then, you know, there's bigger Glock. So that, this is yeah. a Glock 26. You have a Glock 19 and others, you know, come, come a little bit longer barrel, which gives you a little bit more accuracy again. And that depends on your training and, and how much you shoot. So, uh, so those are the pros and cons of, of a pistol, of a handgun, right? Easy to one, carry. They're small um, pros. One thing real are, quick. You're giving up accuracy. Yeah. One thing real quick, uh, revolvers versus semi-automatic revolvers. You know, you're, you're less likely to have a jam in a revolver. Right. It's it's just doesn't happen, especially yeah. if you know what you're doing. Whereas okay. you can get a stovepipe or something like that from you, yeah, from your magazine or whatever. Yeah. Uh Pat stars semi yeah, semi automatics. Yeah. There's a little more that can go wrong with the semi automatic, especially if you're not up to uh, your weapons maintenance and stuff like that, you might want to consider a revolver too. Go to your local gun store that can show you and talk you through everything and you can kind of feel it and stuff like that. All right, sorry, just wanted to kind of get that no, out. No, no, I, I think that's great, Will. So let's let's talk about rifles, right? Um Rifles come and look before you go buy any weapon system, um, go to, you know, one of your bigger, um, gun dealers that have a range. A lot of them, a large, you, know, you can rent, you can yeah. rent, uh, uh, a pistol uh, and you can try them out. So I tell people like pistols are like people, right? Uh, when you're dating someone, you know, some, like a big beefy person, so I'm like a skinny little thing, and there's everything in between. I know, Will, you're shaking your head, but it's totally true. <laughs> uh, so everyone's hands a little bit different. Every gun grip is a little bit different. So yep. oh, try right. them out and see what actually feels good with you. So rifles, right? Again, uh, this is a 308. It's a Tika 308, uh, ultralight, great hunting gun. Uh, this is a rifle. Um, so you. Uh, this is a rifle. Just, there are many like it, but this one is, is mine. <laughs> this one is mine. It's not mine. Um, <laughs> uh, great, great, great hunting rifle. Uh, you know, it gets out there um, and can touch. Uh, put some distance. Uh, Gary Klein, if you're listening, or Jana, or anyone that I've gone hunting with, uh, let's not you know try to throw throw me under the bus with some, some deer hunting.
Oh, did somebody Again, tell you uh, about? Did somebody this. tell they me are. about? Was it Danny that was talking about you missing those deers? <laughs> yeah, you can tell Danny goes deer hunting. Look, unless anyone's gone deer hunting and they understand buck fever, I don't. Know oh, I have no, I have no room to so talk. The AR, so the AR. So that uh, fifteen inch barrel uh, ARs come in all different shape sizes. There's AKs. Um, there's all sides, sorts of different type of uh, rifles out there. So um pros of a rifle right um some like the 308 come with a, a five round magazine built in um others like that ar style or an ak uh style depending on the state that you live in you know you can have a 30 round magazine um or a 10 round or a five round magazine depending on what your local laws are and again speaking of magazines and laws like know what your laws are in your state uh, each state's a little bit different uh and within your county and city so where i live I cannot shoot a, a firearm uh, inside my property line. Even if it was big enough, it doesn't matter. Um, so uh, the little count, the, the town next to me, you can. So mm -hmm. if you own the right acreage. So know, know your yeah. laws. Know what you can carry. If you can open carry versus concealed carry, wear all that stuff. Um, this isn't, this podcast isn't, I'm not going to teach everything you need to know in this 45 minute podcast, but no, your laws research. Kind of cover and we're just, we're just scratching the surface. You guys have to do your own due diligence, right? So, so, you know, the rounds, the different type of rounds, right? Uh, assault rifle or rifles in general just come at, you know, 22, 50 cal. I mean, there's all yeah, sizes. Uh, uh, so, what is it that you need? You know, what are you looking for? And everyone asks, well, what's the best weapon for home defense? You know, uh, is it a, is it a handgun? Is it a rifle? Is it a shotgun? And my answer to that is you. What do you feel most comfortable you, with? Yeah, you you have to know. In my house, I have three little kids and my wife. I am not going to use a shotgun uh, to protect myself unless everyone's in the room. Uh, yeah. All my family members are because that shotgun shoots out a huge cone. Um, if you're using buck as opposed and I, to. Honestly, uh, I probably won't use. Plug. I would use a pistol. That's why I keep the pistol yeah. in my room. Um, you know, so the the AR platform that I have is, is a two, two, three round or a five, five, six. Uh, I mean the one you borrowed. Have. Yes. That's the one that I have sitting here. Oh, okay. Gotcha. What I was saying. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, so, um, but, uh, so, so know, know the ballistics of that, of, of the rounds that yeah. you're shooting and what it can do within, you know, a two, two, three round will fly through sheetrock. Uh, yep. That round is cooking. That, that thing's screaming. So, and that's what that round was intended to do. Um, so versus a nine mil or a 40 cal, 45, anything like that. So know um, what your rounds, uh, the ballistics of each one of those are and how it would have, if you use it, if your purpose is to use it inside your home and, and you miss, know the repercussions of that. Yeah. And, and also when you're talking about caliber or your ballistics, you also need to know what kind of round, whether it's like a ball ammunition or hollow point or, or whatever you're using, you got to know what it's designed for. And what's legal again in your state. Yeah, and what's legal uh, in your state. Yeah. Are you allowed to have hollow points? You know, some states still have that illegal, you know, do you just have to shoot ball? Um, so. Uh, All right. So we've talked a lot about guns. Let's kind of touch a little bit on some other stuff. So tasers. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, let's talk about tasers. I love tasers. So this is a big, it, it annoys the crap out of me. The only way you're going to, you watch it on TV, you know, and they taste somebody and they pass out. Uh, the only way you're passing out from getting hit by a taser is if you knock your head and knock yourself out when you go down. That just, yeah. the taser is designed to essentially overload your system with electricity and just lock you up so you can't do anything. Yep. And as soon as it's over, it's over. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing I, for else. For you... Uh, it happened to me because uh, some of the schooling and training that I got, I mean, we got tased with the X-26. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we got them on a deployment for some weird reason. I don't know why. Um, and we used them against each other. It, it was funny for the new guys. <laughs> but uh, Well, we, yeah, have, you know, we had a little more accountability than you guys did, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so to your point, I'm not going to say that, hey, no one's ever going to pass out because every human's a little bit different. And you see, you know, I would say most of the time tasers, unless someone's hopped up on something, or they're just, you know, their body's totally different than the average person. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really affect them a whole lot. I mean, I've seen not TV shows, but like Live PD where, or, you know, yeah. you can go to YouTube where a dude's been tased and he just rips those suckers out and get, keeps running, right? Um, yeah. I think that's an, um, a rarity, not not normal. 
Yeah. Uh, I know when I was tased, they put a hat right by our feet with a hundred dollar bill in it. So, Hey, if you get it, uh, it's yours. So I was like, hell yeah, man. I'm, I was the first one up there. I'm like, I'm going to get that thing. And I'm, so I'm ready nope. for it. And I was like, can it get down, man? They, they hit me and I fell straight back like a, yep. like a, you know, a piece of plywood, uh, getting blown in the wind, man. It was like, you couldn't boom. do anything, <laughs> nothing, but you know, it is a ride of like eight seconds. It yeah. was short. It was sweet. It was over. It does. Versus, it feels a lot longer than eight seconds. Oh, at the time. <laughs> it totally does. Though. It, it totally does. You know, so everyone asks, Oh, I've been OC sprayed, pepper sprayed, all that. Um, I'd much rather get tased than hit with OC yeah. spray or pepper spray because that stuff lasts a long, long time, much yeah. longer. It lasts so. for hour. Well, the the bad symptoms last for about a half hour, 45 minutes, but you still feel the effects. And then when you go take a shower the next day or that afternoon, woo. cover cover your parts, man. Cover your <laughs> yeah. parts. That's all I have to say. Same thing with OC. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. CS, I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right. So tasers are one thing, the little stun guns, you know, it doesn't happen like you see in the TV where they zap them and they pass out and they throw them away. That doesn't really work like that, but they are a good tool to have. Uh, they, they are a deterrent. You know, you, you hear that clacking and you see that crackling of yep. electricity, you know, that is a, it's a good deterrent and it, and it can help prevent any, uh, or, or deter somebody from trying to get to you. And uh, it doesn't have force. to be the shooting projectile one either. Uh -huh. you, know, you can have a hand taser, um, uh, and get someone in the neck or wherever, man. And, um, like you said, that clack, clack, clack is to me is just as good of a sound as, as a shotgun. It's like, Oh yeah, definitely. I'm good. Definitely. <laughs> pass on, <I'll> pass <laughs> on to the next person. Yep. Uh, okay. So something else you can use, uh, even if you don't feel comfortable having a gun or something like that, there are blunt force objects is what I'm calling it. Right. You're talking about baseball bats, golf clubs, collapsible batons, uh, you know, anything like that that you can use. I meant to have my keys on me. Yeah. Um, but man, if you take your key, right. Uh, usually you car keys pen. are a little bit longer. Um, yeah, a pen, hmm. Uh, that's a great stabbing object, you know? Um, so look, if you're walking to your car um, and I'll, I'll play the Hollywood scene, you know, in a dark alley or the hell with it, let's just say a parking garage, right? And it's poorly lit. And it's that night you had a late night at work. You're, uh, you're working late and you're walking to your car and you just get that little goosebump feeling that we talked about uh, last week in your situational awareness. I tell everyone, man, just walk with your keys, walk with your keys, uh, your, your key ready or a pin if you don't have oh, any yeah. keys and just sit there. It, you know, if you're on public transportation, look, you live in, in, in New York or the Bay Area or anywhere else where, you know, public transportation is used, the metros, um, and there, sit there with just a pin or your key in your hand. Um, I always say put, put it between your ring finger and your middle finger and you can kind of grasp it there in the palm of your hand. That's a great little object. Um, uh, it doesn't sound like much, but it hurts. It hurts like hell. Uh, I um, usually have something on me, so. but if I do find myself out and I get that uneasy feeling, I will in a heartbeat, put my keys between my fingers and you know, you, you're probably going to mess up your hand if you, if you hit somebody with that, but you're going to mess them up worse and it's just enough to get away. And that's what your plan is, right? Oh. You're, you're doing what yeah. you have to do to protect yourself and get away. Um, flashlights. So talking about bluff objects. Oh, just again, know how to use it. Just swinging a baseball bat. Like people will take these huge swings and stuff. Um, the timing of it. So again, um, I don't know of any baseball bat, like personal training out there, but again, know how to use your stuff. So it's not turn around and use against you. Um, that's my yeah. only fear with like blunt force objects or even knives. Um, well, these are kind of last, last resort, right? Mm -hmm. this, this is kind of last resort type stuff. Um, uh, so anyways, uh, so I was up there, you know, I was looking at, at the gun show. They had uh, flashlights. So they make these flashlights that are super bright and flashing and stuff like that. So you can flash it in somebody's eyes and it'll temporarily blind them or disorient them. And not only does it do that, but if you're out in public, people will see that as well. You know, that that strobing flashing light, that's that's kind of a draw to you. It's kind of so that's one thing that you can carry or, or have around with you that will help deter and, and, and you know maybe get somebody to help yeah. you out if possible so i've used those um, flashlights before surefire makes um some really yep. good ones and there's other brands out there uh, that do and i can tell you like when we were doing patrols uh, in our vehicles uh in war zones we would use those to get vehicles if they weren't stopping mm -hmm. um we'd use them just to disorient the driver at a you know at a distance that's safe enough to get them to stop um 
to prevent like a suicide vehicle bomber. Yep. Um, so flashlights, again, you can use a flashlight too as a weapon, as a tool. Uh -huh. Oh, good old uh, mag light. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, there's something else I was going to say uh, along with a flashlight. Super basic. Oh, well, I'll think of it. All right. So, uh, so some other things that I, I saw, uh, these little noisemakers. So my dad actually sent some to my daughters last year for Christmas, and there were little key changes that they put on their purse or whatever, and you hit, and it's a super loud, high-pitched emitting noise. It hurts their ears, and so that will kind of stun them, you know, disorient them, and it will also bring attention to you. So that's another thing that you can kind of carry that's a, a personal defense-type deterrence. Uh, that's what I was going to go with, a whistle, a simple whistle. Yep. You know, you can put that on your keychain. Uh, well, I don't know if they still do, but I remember uh, colleges and hearing about colleges handing out rape whistles to the incoming freshmen. You know that if you hear that if something happened, you'd do your little whistle, and you know. So I don't know if yeah. that's still a thing or if it was just an urban legend. So, uh, so have you ever uh, seen Tiger Claws? It's a brand. Uh, so it's just like it's like the size of a wallet, and you can carry it in your hand. And if something happens and you need it, you just squeeze and out between your fingers comes these like little like claw like knife type things. And they're, they're supposed to be like a, fashioned after a tiger claw. So you go like that. So, you know, you can put them in your hand and kind of like Wolverine. So how do you know you're not going to get like your fingers? Uh, because they have the little grooves for your hands. Okay. So you put your fingers in the grooves. So when you squeeze it, I guess it's supposed to come out. There's, you can go online what if and you have watch fat fingers like I do. Well, maybe it'll take a chunk out. I don't know. Mm. I haven't, I've never seen one in person. I've only seen it online, but okay. uh, those are, are kind of designed to scratch and maim. But another thing they do is they collect DNA. So that's a good thing. You know, if something does happen, yeah. uh, they'll have a little DNA collector on there, but knives, knives is another thing. Uh, once again, you need to be proficient at it. I know I've been carrying a pocket knife since I don't even, as long as I remember, I don't even, I've always had one, you know, and when, yeah. when I was growing up, we could go to school with them and everything. So I've always had one on me unless I'm told I can't. So knives, I think again, you know, train with it. No, um, they're easy. Like you can disarm someone who doesn't know how to use a knife very easily and use it against, uh, against them. However, I carry if a knife you're like you. Them. Uh, I, I carry a knife just like you do. And when I travel, so where I live locally, it, I have a concealed carry permit um, if I want to carry an, an own a firearm. But uh, I carry a knife everywhere I go. When I travel, I carry a knife. I, and again, each state has different regulations on the size of the blade of the knife. If you can have a switch blade or a spring loaded knife, everything else like that. So no, again, if you're going to carry a knife, don't go to these gun shows and buy I, almost, I was trying to look I have, I have some really nice knives, some Winkler knives, but don't go buy a huge blade. Um, yeah. That's totally illegal to carry in your state. Uh, no, um, most states, you know, a pocket knife. I think it's, you know, look at the inch regulation size uh, of what you can and can't carry. Um, that, that's a. Yeah, well, a lot of states have it, so you can't tool. carry the spring loaded or switchblade type knives. And uh, they, most states have a size limit. So it's good to know what the limit is and what you can and can't have. Once again, you know, revert back to your your local laws and, and, and ordinances and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so if I can't I carry we, a pistol, uh, I carry a knife. Yeah. Well, I and usually I, I have pocket, both on me. So, yeah. I, I pack it away like when I'm flying uh, in my checking bag. And, you know, I always make sure when I got to California, lots of visit family, I always carry a knife. Mm -hmm. Since I can't carry a weapon out there. Hard yeah, when I... When I I know when I go back to where I used to work at, I've always got two or three on me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like when, right. when I go into Fayetteville, I just get in a bad mood. And I always pack. Nothing against my Fayetteville family and friends out there, but yeah, no. So the next kind of subject that we talked, about, we've we've kind of covered it, but let's just kind of emphasize on it: uh, how to be a responsible weapon owner, and this includes not only knowing how to use the weapon, but when to use the weapon and where to store the weapon. I know you've talked about this. I, I have a safe. You have a safe. I have multiple safes, uh, a fire mm -hmm. safe and a regular safe. You have multiple safes, I'm sure. Yeah. So um, let's talk about safes real quick. You know, um, everyone asks like, oh, where should I buy a safe? Hey, you know what? Research the safe. Look at what size safe do you need? Look, if you own a lot of weapons like a lot of my buddies do, um, get a big safe. You know, look at how long uh, it can stand within a fire. 
And I, look, and the safe's not just good for weapons. It's good for your marriage certificates. It's good for uh, any a lot important of personal documents. documents. Um, so I keep all my birth certificates in there, marriage certificates, uh, social security cards, um, passports, all that kind of stuff. Uh, within anything that's of value, insurance documents, life insurance policies, all that stuff goes uh, in a large safe that I have. Um, and I think my fire time is almost two hours uh, mm -hmm. that I can w withstand a fire. So and and not even that. the time, but the temperature as well. You got to check. Correct. Yeah. Um, so so look at that. That's an important thing. I have a huge heavy safe that, look, it takes like six to eight grown men um, to move. And it's slippery as hell um, to, to move around. So when I moved to my house, it sat in the same place that we moved it because no one ever wants to pick it up again. Um, yeah. I can't get people up. They're like, oh, hell no, I'm not touching that. <laughs> but then I have little safes too. You know, yep. I have a quick, you know, quick access little gun safe that I keep my pistol in at home. It's the Fort Knox. Uh, I think it's called the Simplex um, handgun safe, and it's a great little safe. It's easy to get into. Um, it has little buttons. I just I, I set like a pre thing, so I don't have to spin dial it if there's an emergency in my home. Um, it's it's not biometric. Um, I have like five little knobs on there, and I just put my little code in there, turn the mm -hmm. thing and, and pop it out. So, but biometric safes are great too. Um, again, we've talked about um, the four D's in, uh, in previous episodes, you know, when it comes to physical security. So, um, you know, the de deter, detect, delay, defend, you know, and so with this episode, we're really talking about that defend time. You know, you've hopefully you've you've called nine one one. Your home alarm system is going off, and wherever you live, uh, whether it's twenty minutes or thirty minutes or five minutes or two minutes, whatever that is, you're going to have to defend yourself. Yep. And so, how do you do it? And that goes back to what Will said in the beginning: have a plan. You know, our plan is like, hey, we're going into the bathroom. You know, my kids and everyone, you're, 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 they're going to get under, in the tub, um, and I have two extra magazines uh, in my bathroom and in some of the drawers. And that's where we're going. Um, so, yeah. So I just gave away my plan uh, <laughs> on social media and everywhere. That's all right, man. Come into my house. It's been a while um, <laughs> since I put, uh, you know, gave someone a little dirt nap. But yeah, um, there you go. Uh, so that goes back to knowing how to use them. Train, train, train. Um, you know, it kind of can. It can be kind of expensive, but you don't necessarily like for guns. I know I'll, I'll practice dry fire exercises a lot. Still, trigger pull exercises, stuff like that. You don't need ammunition for that. So stuff like that. Run through scenarios in your head. Any any type of uh, scenario of training that you can think of that's like walking through your head and stuff like that. I do that all the time. Like, all right, I'll be laying in bed. All right, what happens if something happens right now? This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to react. So any any type of that scenario training that you think about in your head, that's that's always good to walk through. Prepare yourself. Um, <clears throat> ballistics consideration in the home. I know Jake kind of talked about that. You know, if you're using a shotgun, you're probably going to want, I would, I would suggest a uh, buckshot as opposed to a slug, but that's just me. Um, just, you know, find out what you're comfortable with, what you want to use and what the damage that the round is going to inflict. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you've talked about training too. Another good thing is uh, cert guns. Um, a lot of companies make them. They're about 450 ish. Um, and a lot of them have a, the, the feel of your modern handgun. So um, feels like a Glock or any of your more uh, modern style handguns. And uh, it has a laser and emits a laser. Um, uh, a good buddy of mine, Paul, I'll, I'll put a shout out to him. I'll have to look up, up on, on Facebook, but he has a little training academy uh, that he runs up in Pennsylvania. Um, and we used to just sit and I still do this every once in a while, but I, I was just talking to my little sister who's an FBI agent and she, um, she always gets stressed out when she has to go call every, every so often. And so some little basic drills I tell people, just sit on your bed, pick a corner, you know, yep. of your, uh, ceiling line where it comes together, close your eyes and just look at that natural body of aim, um, and, and get that down. So there's lots of tips and tricks out there. Um, there's lots of great little books on Amazon. Um, well, there's one, God, it's Green Eyes and Something uh, is another good book. So, but uh, look at that stuff from, you know, Train, Train, Train uh, yep. is the best uh, best advice I can give you. Um, so when once some considerations, we're going to talk about when choosing a, a, 
a gun. I know we're gonna we're kind of stuck staying on guns, but I think most people that's the reason they get weapons is either for hunting or for home protection. So uh, one thing you want to consider is the different caliber of weapon. You know whether you're gonna get like a 22 or a 32, or you want to get a 45, you know 357 Magnum. These are all you need to kind of decide the the larger the round. It, it, 45 357 magnum the more uh recoil you're gonna have on your on your pistol so uh if you're if you have weak if let's say your wrists are weak from a carpal tunnel or you're just not as strong because you're you know you're a little advanced in age and you don't have the control you probably want to stick with a lower caliber now if you're young and you you feel comfortable with it you know that's that's up to you so those are some other things you need to consider is the size of the caliber of the weapon you're you're using you don't want to get a desert eagle uh for home protection no. Uh, and again, oh, what are you comfortable with? <laughs> yeah. You know, what are you comfortable with? I, I can tell you, like, I have all, you know, my wife has thrown my buddy's guns and shot all types of, of weapons. And she loves to shoot a little Ruger 22. Uh, oh, yeah. That's that's her. And look, she she's phenomenal with it. And I'll get a lot of people ask, well, why don't you shoot a 45? You know, well, yeah, sure. That that round, you know, punches a bigger hole and it's a bigger hole exiting uh, your target. Um, but if you know how to shoot, it doesn't matter if you shoot with a 22, it doesn't matter. Uh, I prefer a nine mil um, because nine mil is a lot cheaper than a 40 or 45 ammo. Um, and I'm a decent shot. So I don't and have it to worry. It used to be a lot easier to find, but not anymore. Yeah. Um, and so again, it goes back to train, train, train. Um, uh, I know a lot of cops and you uh, we've taught a lot of uh, police officers across the country. And uh, most cops, because they don't, you know, their department doesn't have the funding and the resources. They don't go out and shoot unless they shoot and train themselves. Yep. Uh, but a lot of cop shootings, you'll see that they're, they're they miss quite a bit at about ten yards or, or less. Um, and so it's adrenaline kicking in. It's everything. Um, and so if that's a, a police officer who's been trained uh, more probably than the average person, and they're missing at ten yards, what do you think you're going to do if you don't train? If you just bought that gun, you took your concealed carry course, and you think you're good, um, you're not good. Uh, you're, yeah. you're far from it. Um, to me, you're an irresponsible gun owner. Go out and train. Uh, you, you should shoot uh, quite a bit and prepare for that. Um, the two books I was trying to remember, uh, one's called Stay in the Fight, A Warrior's Guide to the to the Combat Pistol, written by Kyle Lamb, and the other one's uh, Green Eyes and Black Rifles. Um, two great books that have some, some awesome pointers in there. Um, and then uh, my buddy Paul, uh, former Ranger, Marine Ranger, uh, Green Beret, uh, PT Consulting uh, is another good little um, little thing out there. He does videos all the time. So, again, uh, look, look, do your research. Just because someone was a Ranger, Green Beret, um, or whatever line of work they came from doesn't mean they're a great instructor. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Uh I know, I know we've talked a lot about weapons, but some other things you can do is, is take self-defense. Like a buddy of mine owns the do a Krav Maga dojo out in uh, California, but we're, I'm not, Krav Maga is not the only game out there. You know, there's a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, karate, uh, judo, kickboxing, you know, there's a, uh, Aikido. There's all types of stuff out there. You know, it's, it's good to train what, whatever it is, boxing, you know, whatever. It's, it's good to have some sort of self-defense training and to keep, up to date with it. I know I don't do as much as I used to, or I should. What about you, Jake? So I don't, um, I've been on a mat in years. Yeah. Um, I'm, I miss it. Um, I wrestled in, in high school. Um, one of my best friends, a phenomenal boxer. So we used to box a lot on the team. And then we used to do, we did a lot of mixed martial arts, um, in the military, uh, yep. in the unit I was in, uh, we actually, we have little different training centers and stuff like that. Um, but again, anything is better than nothing. Um, I think Mike Tyson says it the best. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't been punched in the face before, go get punched in the face uh, <laughs> and realize like what happens uh, yeah. when you haven't been punched in the face before. You're, you know, especially in the nose when your eyes swell up and everything else. Um, you know, you get a little distorted vision sometimes. Uh, I'm, kind of half kidding with that don't just go out and get randomly punched well, i mean you can go to you, most places that you train you're gonna have that physical contact you're gonna get that and okay. kind of you, you start to feel what it's like you know obviously we don't 
want you to just go up to somebody, hey, it hit me, you know, whatever. But it, go to your training centers, go to your your different self defense, whatever it is. And once you start training, you sooner or later you're going to get hit in the face, either on purpose or on accident. And you, yeah, even with gloves on, I can tell yeah. you, man. Like uh, it'd been a while. I um, I got hurt. Uh, went to our schoolhouse to go train, and is out out of the game for about two years, right? Of um, of team life, and I can tell you. Um, I went back and uh, we started rolling around, got punched in the nose, and was like, "Yeah, it's it's been a while." Yep. Um, and so uh, I used to joke around, tell my wife, "I just punched him in the nose." She's like, "What's wrong with him?" I'm like, I just I, I need uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need it. She wouldn't, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah Anytime so, you want me to punch in the nose, I'm here for you, Jake. Well, thanks, Will. <laughs> um, I just got it redone in, in August, man. This this bad boy has had so many breaks. I can finally breathe out of both nostrils, so I'm good right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, whether go take a a self defense class that interests you. Hey, if it's if it's boxing, go learn how to box. If yeah. it's um, Krav Maga, learn that. You know, uh, Taekwondo, Wing Chun. I mean, there's so many different things out there um, to go out and learn. And look, take your kids with you. It, it's good. Um, it's good to, to learn how to defend yourself and protect yourself, not just from standing. Look, most fights go to the ground. Uh, yeah. That's always my thing. So um, learn how to fight on your feet and then learn how to fight and grapple on the ground. That's that's kind of why mixed MMA is such a popular uh, training. Same with Krav Maga, really, because they do they kind of incorporate that, too. But I, I know for me, I because of my issues, I'm sure you have some issues with your legs and you can't do what you used to do. I've been looking at like a, I think it's called a keto. That's a little more. uh mm-hmm joints and and stuff like that so i found a, a dojo around here i think i'm gonna go check out here pretty soon so. yeah there's one called wing chung it was um created mainly for women and i yeah. grew up as a kid doing that uh, my neighbor was an instructor and it's super simple you know it's quick fast strikes uh to get someone this morning like we were just kind of talking mm-hmm. about and then then you can go for the heavy blows um there's no high kicks or anything like that i can tell you though since i am an amputee now i can throw a mean roundhouse kick man this leg can get <laughs> up there and it's heavy and it's quick and it's coming at you fast so um i can throw a mean round a better roundhouse kick now uh because i'm an amputee than what i did before and then Um, he'll take it off and beat you with it (laughs) yeah i'm a little unstable at that point but yeah um so yeah so you know we've talked a lot about a lot i think we've thrown out a ton today a ton of information and i think if our listeners and viewers out there if you just take one thing away it's train 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 have a plan if you're uncomfortable with owning a firearm, don't get it. Uh, if you're not a, if you're not going, if you're not responsible enough, you know, uh, to to protect it and to train with it, don't get it. Um, if you don't have the right mindset, felt, don't get it. You know, so you something that you're comfortable with, um, and then once you are comfortable <laughs> with it, I don't care if it's uh, look, man. I tell my kids like, hey, dad's going to talk about uh, self defense and like how to protect your home and my little like three-year-old he pulls up his little plastic sword he's like oh dad i'm good at the house man so look man if it's a little plastic samurai sword um that you feel good with hey this this can hurt um you know go train on it um so um and know your local laws ask you if you you know ask your sheriff's department or your your police department what you can and can't do they should know uh or you can go online google it you know, there's plenty of stuff. Just do your due diligence. Knows what 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 you can and can't do. Uh, some other considerations is insurance. I, I know most uh, CCW, in most concealed carry permit people have some sort of a uh, insurance to cover them if something does, God forbid, happen. Uh, a lot of homeowners insurance will have some sort of uh, defense insurance claims in there that you can work in. So just you know, call your insurance companies, find out what you can and can't do, and or or what they can and can offer you. <clears throat> so I'm so that, that's a really good point. And maybe we look if you are a gun, if you are a homeowner, or you have a concealed carrier, you, you do shoot someone. Expect to be tied up in court quite a bit, um, and that's one thing. So there's uh, an organization. It's called USCCA. Um, it's concealed carry uh, membership. I think they offer you up to a million dollars in court fees, but definitely expect. Uh, yourself to be in court, that weapon is going to be used as evidence until it's cleared uh, through the court system for a while. Um, and so protect your, that's another way of protecting yourself. So go out there and research, research self-defense insurance companies. USCCA is a concealed carry uh, membership uh, with an insurance rate. I forget how much I pay, um, but uh, yeah, 
research because if you do have to use it for self-defense, you are going to be held up, uh, whether it's on the yeah. legal side or it could be um, there's numerous people who've broken into homes and they're, you know, the homeowner shot and killed them and their family are, are suing the family. So. Yeah, and, and laws are changing all the time. I know some places out, out West, there's some bills being introduced that essentially, I mean, I don't want to get into politics or anything like that, but it's going to be a lot harder for you if on you, if you do protect yourself. So just make sure you know what's happening and get involved with different organizations to, help protect your rights, you know, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So boom. I like it. Will. Um, uh, one last thing. Uh, once again, if you're not a fighter, you know, Hey, you know, Ray, Ray, he's a lover, not a fighter. Right. So, uh, he, we, we, we do always have an escape plan, you know? So if, if, if that's in, if that's what you want to do and that's what you're prepared to do, have a plan to do it. If somebody breaks into my house and I don't want to fight, I know I'm going out the window and we're all meeting in the backyard or something like that, right? So it's just have a plan. So you're saying Start. get in shape? Get a good I cardio shape to run? I didn't say that. You know, I mean, this boy don't run, you know. Yeah. I might walk quickly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, all right. Anything else for us today? Nope. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Again, tons of information. Do your research. Do your due diligence. Uh, like I always talk about, like Will said, have a plan. Um, and be smart. Um, not everyone should own a gun, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, be a responsible absolutely. gun owner. So um, I think Josh, we had Josh on the show at the beginning of this, and this is one thing that he definitely uh, wanted us to hit on is, hey, not everyone should own a gun. Josh didn't own a gun for years and years and years. Neither did Danny. Um, and so learn. Yep. All right. Uh, so check us out on our YouTube channel, Coffee Squad Podcast. Uh, go to YouTube, subscribe, like, follow, comment. Tim, he's... He's a trooper, man, and we appreciate all his, his support. Uh, go to coffeesquadpodcast.com. You can like and follow, or you can get a, sign up for our newsletter. You can get all that good stuff. Uh, listen to us on all platforms, whatever your favorite one is. Subscribe to us, listen, comment. We're going to start doing some giveaways, so you guys, I need you to start doing some interactions, and we'll have some uh, cool prizes for you. Uh, anything else? No, have a great week, everyone. Uh, we're going to wrap up this series next week. We're kind of just going to do an overview. Nope. And then uh, then we got we'll some cool guests coming on the next few months. So, Yep. So, awesome. All right. Thanks, have guys. Have a good one.